got today is a big Lincolnshire sky. Um, they picked Lincolnshire to put most of the RAF bombers into because they had the range to get to Germany from here. We're on the roughly on the east side of England, um, inland from the coast by about 40, 50 miles. But this was a big flat plain. Um, it's still used today. And RAF Scampton is, as we're going down this road here, is off to the right hand side back towards where I can see on the horizon here, Lincoln Cathedral, uh, which is still, even today, the biggest building for miles around. It's on the only promontory. You might get a shot of it in a second, maybe. Um, it's on the only promontory around here. So the IBCC is basically uh, an organization which is there to remember the men that died in the bomber campaign to memorialize them, but also there to do reconciliation work and to do it internationally too. Fortunately, unlike a lot of car programs, I haven't decided to film my speedometer, so you can't tell how fast I'm going. So I'd just like to reassure all the law enforcement officers in the audience that I am naturally within the boundaries of the law at all times and at no stage in my speeding, despite the apparent quickness of the film. That's just because I've sped it up slightly. There is a certain irony to going to go and visit the Bomber Command Memorial. Um, driving a BMW, but uh, there we go. This is the International Bomber Command Center Memorial. And the spire you can see in the middle of the picture there is the same wingspan as a, a Lancaster bomber. Uh, I think it's uh, 103 meters, I want to say, something like that. And around it are the panels memorializing the 58,500 Bomber Command air crew and ground crew. And indeed, one lady physicist from Leeds University who was killed during the course of the campaign. It's the most beautiful and serene place, I have to say, on a day like today where it's not that windy. Uh, it's kind of cool. And then over on our right hand side, is the city of Lincoln. So something like a third of all Bomber Command crews were based up here in Lincoln. It was one group and five group. And so when this was first conceived as a project, the inner ring of names here were the first phase, the first group. Um, and you can see the names on the walls here. It's rather beautifully done. What they've done is they've, they've laid all the names out um, without rank or award or anything else. They're just the honored dead. Quite a few of whom just disappeared without trace, often into the North Sea. The night missions were quite different because unlike say the 8th Air Force who are flying during day where you could see aircraft markings, you knew where everybody was gonna be in the sky. So many of these bomber crews were lost with no trace. No one knew what had happened to them probably they'd taken damage on a raid and then just gone down in the sea and no one saw it, no one heard it. By and large, they wouldn't be able to broadcast. Sometimes they could, sometimes they couldn't. And they were just lost somewhere into the darkness of the night and the cold sea. And no one ever saw them again. And here we've got the silhouettes. This is on the right hand side, Dingy Young's crew from 617 Squadron who were lost during the dams raid. And on the left hand side there, you can probably, if you know your history, see Guy Gibson and Barnes Wallace. We'll go back into the memorial, I think, and just show you quickly. So a couple of things which immediately kind of stand out and I'll try not to disturb everybody else whilst I'm going through here, so I'll be a bit quieter. The first thing is every now and again, just a moment of memorial. Somebody's left a poppy there. Is that it? No, it's not. No. Right, over here, hopefully, I will be able to show you on the 
second in the ring. Gibson GP. Guy Gibson. Killed the pilot officer Warwick in 1944. Flying a mosquito that he probably shouldn't have been flying. And you can hear the echo in here. That is a Lancaster's inside. I'm not sure I want to be at the back there. It's a really beautiful place. It's a really beautiful place and it's very beautifully done. You can see here, there's a big grass expanse area and what they've done, which I think is rather beautiful. Each one of these trees here has got a plaque by it and they are, this is Lincolnshire. And we're looking across it, out towards, this is due east this way. And these are the bases here. So each tree is a base and it, next door to each one are the squadrons that flew. And then their losses. So, Gibson's base, RAF Scampton, losses, 1,066 from those squadrons, including, of course, 617. I don't know where 101 was. I'm actually not sure they were in Lincoln, to be honest, but 101 Special Squadron was a bit of a sneaky beaky squadron. It was one that did the ECM stuff. And a squadron strength, roughly 200 guys at any given moment in time. 101 Squadron lost something like a thousand aircrew, a five times turnover. And I think it was 406 RAAF lost something similar again, similar strength. So you're talking 500% losses. So, welcome. This is the US military cemetery in Cambridge in the United Kingdom. Um, this cemetery was established in 1954 and there are just over 3,000 US service personnel from all branches buried here. And there are another 5,100 or so whose names cover these walls. It's, it's a very beautiful place. I have to say, I've been to a lot of military cemeteries in my time. And this is very beautifully laid out. The only slight problems you can probably hear in the background is the main road is about 10 yards that way. A lot of the names on here are just because they have no known grave. But every now and again, there's one like here. That little star, that little rosette, means that body was found and his remains have been recovered. Of the 5,000-ish names on the wall, there are a hundred and some rosettes like that where they have finally found, finally found a place. Now, interestingly, unlike UK memorials where they don't tend to do this, on the US ones here, I'll look up Lance Leon Jr. later, Lieutenant Colonel Air Corps, Oklahoma, that gold denotion means he won a Medal of Honor. You start to maybe get a feel for how 
rare that is when you look down this list of names and you realize I think that's the only one on this wall and just some of these names I mean this is these are just bomb squadron names these guys will have gone down in the North Sea somewhere or been blown up or just taken off and never come back it's nice to see that there are a few rosettes on here there are a few boys just here at the end who've who found a, a rest or their bodies have been found and then of course behind me is the memorial itself for those who were buried here there are a number of people from exercise tiger which was the uh, disaster off Slapton Sands in 1943 when during a practice for the invasion an e-boat or a group of e-boats Schnellbotten got into got into the formation and shot the thing up with torpedoes if you were air crew on a badly shot up plane you were interned and then eventually in the 50s brought here to be with your comrades and so many boys did come back again badly shot up you know a random shell going through a aircraft fuselage a machine gun bullet a bit of flak cannon shell whatever it was that dismembered and disfigured these boys and killed them so they're here too and as a Brit walking around a memorial to a, another nation's dead who came over to come and fight in common cause with us it's quite a um, it's quite an emotional thing to see these lads and I'm very pleased that there is a corner of England that is forever America I've walked in memorials in France to British dead on French soil and I sometimes feel very sad that they never got home but on the other hand they're with their comrades in a land that they fought for and I think the true the same is true here they're with their comrades in a land that they fought for that they didn't have to come and fight for they could have found some cushy job somewhere and ducked out of the whole thing and they didn't and they paid for that decision with their lives and at the end of all of this when you see all of these gravestones laid out like this I think you have to remember that the reason they did it was because they were fighting a tyranny the likes of which Europe had simply never seen before it was not Kaiser Mark II it was something quite different quite quite different and if they hadn't come and if their government hadn't backed them to come then then I'd be speaking German in fact I probably wouldn't exist there's a guy called Bert Stiles who was a flyer um, with the USAF 8th Air Force and then eventually actually weirdly 9th um, who wrote a book called Serenade to the Big Bird which is all about his experiences during that time and he wrote some words which I will try and read for you here but I may have to re-record over the top of there are all kinds of people senators and whores and barristers and bankers and dishwashers there are Chinamen and cockneys and gypsies and negroes there are lesbians and corn huskers and longshoremen there are poets and lieutenants and short stops and prime ministers there are Yanks and Japs and poor whites and certain numbers of people who enjoy rape there are Germans and Milanesians and beggars and holy rollers there are people and someday we are going to catch on that no matter where you were born how your eyes slant or what they're their blood type they are just people they have legs and arms and eyes and if they are lucky some have breasts and some have testicles they are not masses they will not go on being slaves they are just people partly good and partly bad mostly balancing out and until we call them people and know they are people all of them we're going to have a sick world on our hands out of the people have come St Francis and Margaret Sullivan Leonardo and Babe Ruth Madame Chang Chai Shek and Paul Robertson Diego Riviera Mary the Virgin Robin Hood and Joan of Arc William Shakespeare and Jesus who was born of Mary in a manger 
And from the people have come the Pentagon Building and the Totem Pole and the Merritt Parkway and the Burma Road and the Taj Mahal and the, and the Panama Canal, the Bel Air Cobra and Penicillin, the Stradivarius and the Prophylactic Diaphragm, the Birch Bark Canoe and the Toothbrush. And by the people, the Song of Bernadette and the Book of Psalms, for whom the bell tolls, Silent Night, the Quran, the Lord's Prayer, you can't take it with you, and Walden, the Declaration of Independence and Magna Carta, Tom Jones and a young man with a horn. And the people must eat. There is wheat bread and corned beef and hague and hague. There is rye bread and taro root and milk of goats. There is savolza and caviar and salted almonds. There is spam and soya beans and bird's nest soup. There is black bread with mold on it and watery soup with eyes of grease on it. And there is starvation. They wear fur parkas and black lace panties, 10 gallon hats and rope slanted sandals, flying suits and Harris tweeds and field boots and ski boots and cowboy boots and Levi's. Now they live in mud huts and thatch roof cottages, yurts and igloos and tents and caves and bombed out shelters somewhere in a city. Some have bathtubs, some have a river. Some have the open fields and the rain and their kids play in the minefields. There are factories and mines and railroads and liberty ships and C-54s enough to build for people to create a whole new little world and haul it away to wherever they want. They could build hospitals and sewage systems and schools and theatres and steel mills. They could prefabricate the pieces and carry them away to all the farms and dells and towns and crossroads where they are needed. There could be tractors and portable power units all over the map if only the bombers would lay off and we could all agree on a way to do it. If the peacemakers could sit quietly in comfortable chairs and look at the world and realize it has changed since the fish crawled out of the sea and evolved into men who killed because there wasn't enough to go around. If the wise men of the United Nations could sleep in soft sacks and wake up late and eat scrambled eggs and pineapple juice and realize that if they chose and if they take it easy and they don't get too salty and wanted to, they could work out a setup where the people in the world can feed and clothe everyone in the world and have plenty of time left over for play. And we could build enough schools so that everyone could go and learn to add and subtract and keep from multiplying too rapidly. If the wise apples could just decide now that sooner or later people will work it out so that everybody has enough peanut butter and toilet paper so, so as, as soon as they find the right system to work under. If the Weisenheimers could just agree that everyone should have a chance to lie in the sun and look away at the mountains once in a while, that everyone should have the chance to shoot the moon and reach for a star if he doesn't raise too much hell going after it, to be free, to be responsible for his dreams, to his comrades, but to be free to walk alone. The last of the forts was home for the night, motors cut, wheels chocked, crews unloaded. I sat on the grass until the moon rose and I tried to think out my own way in the world coming after and wondered whether there would be any time for it. I don't know. I just wanted to live for a while and try to grow to understand some of it. Just to live in the world and maybe have a little longer to tie it and maybe help a little to tie it together. Maybe that waste gunter hadn't wanted any more than that either. I've watched some babies born. There is always blood at birth. There is horror and pain and the smell of afterbirth and the red ugliness of a new child. Maybe that is the way that the world is born too. I looked away at the sky and I asked Lady Luck to fly in close in the rest of my missions and asked that my eyes be clear and my mind be cool. There was hope then and there was fear. There is always fear. And there was love for the world because it is big world. And there was love for the world because it is a big world. And there is good in it. And truth and deep loveliness. A flight of typhoons came over low. It was time to be getting back. I'd missed Chow as it was and I had to wash my hands. Bert Stars was killed in November 1944 flying a P-51 over Belgium. He'd finished his tour and he volunteered to do another and he didn't survive like so many others. And so to him and all the Americans that came here and fought with us, thank you. <laughs>